Welcome to the August plan with me. If you're new here, my name is Canova and let's get started. If I just had one word to sort of sum up the process of pulling together this nameless bullet journal theme, it would be an amalgamation, just the marrying of a lot of different ideas. I had originally planned to do a jungle theme spread in July, but when it was determined that the Olympics was likely going to happen, I moved forward with an Olympics theme bullet journal spread, and I'm so glad that I did. I really enjoyed it, and if you haven't seen that, you should take a look at it. But ultimately, I still was thinking about doing this jungle theme, but then realized that there were so many of them, and just like when you see a lot of something, you sometimes get cold feet, or at least I get cold feet. I like to try to be original. It's pro probably impossible to be really original because most things have been done. But I had the idea to do the jungle theme because I have been teaching my students all year uh, via Zoom or Google Classroom to draw a lot of different animals and I thought why not put all that work to good use? So I had the animals, I had the jungle theme, and then I started thinking about my birthday. I'm a Leo and I wanted to include lions. And, and then I started thinking about uh, these African basket weavings. I was like, oh, we could do, instead of a jungle, it could be the Serengeti. And I was all over the place. And then I finally sort of came back and thought, what things, what ideas are you most excited about? And one of the key things that I had sort of just dove straight in was this idea of these African baskets and basket weaving. And I decided right then that the core of my theme for the month of August would be Africa. So I looked at a bunch of different basket weave patterns and I decided instead of drawing them to try to incorporate an actual weaving into my bullet journal. Now, this whole idea is kind of based on those paper placemats that you made as a kid in elementary school at Thanksgiving and you, you, know, you bring it home, you cut up your construction paper, but moved up a little bit in terms of difficulty. I even uh, simplified as I was moving through it. I just realized that it was going to take an enormous amount of time to include um, the colors how I originally placed them. So I'm going to break things down. I painted that page with gouache paint because I really wanted it um, to be opaque. But I want to talk specifically about what's going here. I'm using the washi tape. I pre-cut all my strips in the colors. I got a very uh, specific count, but made sure I had extras. I created a grid pattern based on the bullet journal squares because it's much like graph paper when you think about it without the lines. And so based on the number of squares that were going to be present on my little ledge, I came up with a pattern and set up a little template. I knew that I probably was going to be riffing a little bit because I hadn't done it in this way before. So I wanted to have something to guide me, but also have a little bit of room to move about. And ultimately I made a few changes just to simplify. I knew I wanted to use a lot of color um, and I knew I wanted a combination of different paper. So what you're looking at is two vinyl papers and a, and a metallic, a textured metallic paper. I wanted it to have real presence in my journal. Now, I ended up gluing these the first time through, but the next time I thought, you know what, there's an easier way to do this, and I ended up using some score tape to do that. I kept trying to find an easier way to do things, but ultimately I went back to my original plan, but used score tape instead of glue to get everything together. I also used score tape to glue it into my bullet journal because this is a lot of paper. It's a little bit heavier than adding a piece of watercolor paper in. Now let's look at these drawings. I 
wasn't quite sure where I was going to place everything. I just knew that I wanted to have a lot of different drawings and I decided to make stickers. This was my first time making stickers. So I just bought some plain white sticker paper and drew all the animals and pencil on the paper. As you can see, I have multiples of different animals and various sizes and Ultimately, you'll also see that I made a mistake in um, creating these stickers because right now, as you're looking at this, I am drawing my stickers on the wrong side of the paper. When you look at the sticker paper, at least the sticker paper I have, uh, the two sides are pretty much identical. And you can't really tell until you peel the sticker off which side um, is the part that will peel off and have the sticky part under the bottom. I was drawing on the opposite side, so when I peeled them off, yeah, they they weren't stickers. I ultimately had to glue them, but lesson learned. Um, I, I actually wasn't really frustrated so much by it. I got a good laugh um, because I had done a lot of pre-drawing of these animals. Um, some of them were based on animals I had taught my students to draw, like the elephant. And, these others are actual animals and birds found in Africa. I love elephants, the gentle giants that they are. Um, I kept thinking about this sort of futuristic world. And so that's why you see the vinyl and the metallic textures. And I put a little sort of African princess, you'll see that I created this sort of a futuristic scene on my cover page. It's futuristic in terms of how it's presented. I don't know if we would, you know, find a woman riding an elephant through a field of flowers, which you'll see, but um, it's what I sort of envisioned in my mind with these orbs and it was it was a lot like I said an amalgamation of lots of different ideas I colored in this elephant a light gray and then ultimately went back in with this dark gray and regretted it but that's the process sometimes you do things and you you kind of go ah I wish I hadn't done that I just knew that I wanted him darker and I had a host of gray markers to choose from uh, but for whatever reason I chose that one I am using a lot of different markers. I'm gonna put what markers I'm using in the description box. I I purchase a lot of metallic markers. I have the metallic acrylographs. I have metallic uniballs, signos. I have lots of different metallics that I have purchased from Amazon. So you'll see me using a lot of different pens and I'll link them in the description box. I'm using uh, a sort of marigold tumbo, uh, the Archer and Olic metallic pins, and I think it's like the bronze and the gold, and I am using a Pigma Micron in two sizes, 005 and 008, uh, to outline these animals. So some of the more detailed things I am, of course, doing with the 005, but the larger things I'm doing with the 08. If you're watching carefully, you might see um, spreads that are completed. That's because I do all the painting and cutting ahead of time so that I can quickly go through the process while filming. I am using some petal washi tape from the washi tape shop. I bought a lot of washi tape from the washi tape shop, including these flower petals, and then ultimately didn't use these flower petals because if I was drawing flowers or painting them, uh, I could very quickly draw those myself and I rather enjoy the process. But I thought, let's think about some sustainability. Let's use this washi tape. And I thought, let's use it here. I knew that I was gonna go back in and draw over it though because I wanted the flowers to resemble these flowers that I had seen on kente cloths. So reminiscent of African patterns. If you watched a number of my videos, you know that I love textiles. I did an Atomi spread in January and my um, Bullet Journal 2021 spread was based on African fabrics, the mermaid's tails, etc. Again, leaning into fabrics for this particular bullet journal spread as well. 
someone in the Archer and Olive uh, group actually inspired me a lot this time to start thinking about sustainability and using the things that we have instead of purchasing new items. So I really sort of dug deep and made the decision to purchase a few things, of course, but to really look at all the stuff I had and try to find ways to use it. And I was really happy with how things came together. You will see a host of different washi tapes. I can't stop buying it. I love the mini washi tapes to um, add little details to spread and just to finish edges. I like things to have a sort of finished appearance. This is my calendar page. I really wanted this lion that you'll see in a minute to be sort of in the dark, nocturnal animals, uh, if you will. And I still wanted to marry this idea of the fabric. And I found this great font online that you will see me use a little bit later. And I drew that font out in all my different spreads, which was quite a feat because it looked great when it was large, but it was much harder to do when it was small. So the calendar page for me is my sort of at a glance. All my important dates, things that I need to remember are on this page and I don't like to go back to the beginning to the year at a glance. I usually include some other things on this page, but instead I decided to do a dashboard page. There's a listing of my bills is gonna go in the sun in order of dates. This spread I'm using a tracker, not just a regular calendar, but more of a table. My packages that come, I'm trying to do a lot less shopping, so my packages will also be on that page. It's just sort of a one-stop shop where I can go and get things done. These are my weeklies. I am going back to a rolling weekly style because I have a lot of things to do in the month of August. Things are picking up in a major way and I have a lot of projects that need to be done with a million little tasks in order to complete them. So instead of rewriting them, if you don't know with the Rolling Weekly, you sort of keep a list of the monthly projects and then you're in your dailies, you write down all the things that you need to do to accomplish those things. There are a million different ways of organizing yourself. Some people like Kanban boards, some people use Notion, but I use my bullet journal for the most part and I have some separate things where notebooks where I'm keeping major notes and sketches or ideas for certain things just because it's easier to combine it and it's like a long-term collection if you will but for this particular journal I want to keep as much as possible in there so that I can use it and keep it with me and refer back to it as much as possible. So this little ledge here has an August calendar, it has a box for my to-do list, and that's all that's going to be there. I created another weaving. I didn't think you need to see me make another one. Um, it's just a different pattern, actually an easier pattern. And this right here is my audition tracker. In addition to projects, auditions are picking up. Most of them aren't in person, and so I'm doing a lot of self-tapings, and it's a lot to sort of keep up with because they have to be filmed, they have to be edited, um, they have to be sent out, there are due dates that need to be um, attended to, and each one has its very specific needs. So having a tracker with all that information is key for me. Otherwise, I'm looking in a lot of different places on my computer most of the time in order to figure these things out. But having one space is great. Here's that font I found. I found it on the internet I printed it out um, if I knew where it came from because it really was just like a random thing I found I would credit the person if they see it I thought it was great and really wanted to use it there's a lot of amazing fonts online if you um, are looking for fonts that are unique that you can use in your bullet journal I strongly encourage it so for this mood tracker, I leaned back into the weaving and decided to do all these African baskets in varying sizes. Throughout the month, I will go back and color them in. Uh, only three different colors, but it will vary in pattern. I hope this turns out 
as vibrant as I think it will in my mind. I am looking forward to seeing the end of the month of August for this spread. I really was loving, even at this stage of it, looking at the baskets as I was drawing in the details. All right, time for the final flip. I say this every time, but it really is my favorite part. And looking through the final flip for this particular month is so cool because it just wasn't a set theme. I really had no idea what I was going to be doing in the beginning. I just knew that I had all these ideas and I think that they came together in a really vibrant and cool way. The weaving, using the washi tape and the animals, and the different types of paper, the different types of font. It was a lot of fun, um, stressful fun, because it took me a long time to just sort of sort it out in my brain what I wanted to do. There's some new things this, this month in the dashboard. I'm excited to see how that turned out. And um, I'm also just looking forward to these weeklies. I love how they look, the animals. I really, um, I'm really am sort of grateful for the chaos that brought about this spread. And sometimes um, in that process, you get something amazing. I decided to end with a quote from an Afrofuturist, a literary Afrofuturist, Octavia Butler. If you haven't read her stuff, you should. But the quote is, in order to rise from its own ashes, a phoenix must burn. I'm looking forward to positive change um, in the future, both in my projects and in the world we live in. Till next time.